move on now to um, our next topic, um, and that is the origins of COVID. But specifically here, um, it's related to the accusation that's come out in recent times that certain theories about the origins of COVID are being suppressed, whereas others are being prioritised. Um, and I want to just want to read out something to, to kick us all off on this front. And it's it's very straightforward. The intelligence community states that it does not know exactly where, when, how coronavirus was originally transmitted. So our starting point here, Tom, isn't that we've had a particular theory that's now found prominence because it's been backed up by empirical data. We still have many theories out there floating around and the intelligence com community have admitted that they do not know which of those theories is the accurate one. The genesis of the, this particular coronavirus um, and its origins. So the discussion I really want today to focus is not on where it started. The folks that wanted to, I want to focus more upon, if we can, the reasons why certain theories are being promoted and prioritised and why some theories are being suppressed. What's your take? Yeah, and as you say, this isn't. We're not going to do a de detailed discussion of of, of our, you know our thoughts on where where COVID originated. Um, we'll obviously touch on that, but this is more a focus on uh, on which which uh, theories uh, uh, have scientific evidence, which theories are being promoted by different governments or or suppressed by governments. And and yeah, I mean, I think it's um, I think it's probably true that that governments around the world always act in their own interests to, to secure their own power. And if, in, if uh, one of the vehicles through which they do that is by promoting or suppressing particular uh, origin theories regarding COVID, then, then they go ahead and do that. And they have been doing that. Um, and, uh, you know, that's interesting. And of course that, that includes uh, governments particularly and and politicians perhaps more individual politicians perhaps more so than than governments per se um do you think example, it's, for do example you, donald trump sorry. you know doing the whole china virus and and you know uh, uh and uh, promoting theories about it you know how how it may have been uh, manufactured in a lab etc i know that you know we're going to talk about there is there is the potential that that happened, um, but without, I, I think, without any real evidence that, that 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 was the case, that was certainly something that the you know that Trump and his people wanted to get out there so that they could place blame on on China and uh, you know encourage racist supporters to uh, to back them even more and to you know have economic challenges to to the Chinese government etc. So what we have there is a prioritization of a theory, a theory that's being promoted by one particular politician whose credibility, let's say, is, is beyond questionable. Um, but because there's a vacuum, because we do not have any firm evidence that at this point anyway that links um one of those theories to its origins of covid of coronavirus the vacuum in itself allows a lot of people to to have an opinion to or to have a, a bias a prejudice um and i know that in some instances you know there's a big concern that if if our focus is on china per se as being the, the focal point for its origins then it, it enables those individuals who um, are racist to bring it to the fore um, 
but I think I have, I have the, one of my major problems is, is that we, we mustn't let truth be pushed into the shadows by a fear of the public response. Because I think politicians tend to do that all the time because they're, especially at the moment, they're playing the populist card. They are allowed to get away with saying things and doing things that they know will win them votes in you know if you if, if for example you're a politician and you already have let's say 30 percent of the demographic sorted they're going to vote for you pretty much whatever you do and if another politician on the, in another party let's say has 28 or 32 percent of their demographic already sorted because it's so it's it's so close, what you're then doing is you're trying to appeal for those people outside of your demographic. So those on the right will tend to appeal to the more emotional response. Um, it doesn't really, you know, it, it, they lose interest in evidence and facts and truth. It's just about getting them to put an X next to the candidate of their choice. And the same goes for the other party. So it depends on how you play the game. So if you're going to appeal, let's say, to a patriotic or nationalist base, if you happen to be on the right, by degrading, let's say, China or Russia or North Korea, and that happens to win you enough votes to push you over the line, alongside the other things that you're doing and saying that appealing to that particular group at the end of the day that's all they care about yeah so in, in, in terms of donald trump or possibly you know boris johnson etc by appealing to the idea that covid coronavirus came from china and it's the chinese fault will chinese fault will win you votes and for them they don't really care about people tearing each other's throats out in the streets in terms of the racism, the prejudice, the bigotry, uh, because they've, they've, they've achieved their aim. They've got their power. Yeah. So it, it's the vacuum, I think it's the problem. Um, that, that, right. and, and can I just say one more thing as well? The other yeah. thing that concerns me is that just because you have a report that's been published, let's say in, in two years' time, that says this is where coronavirus originated from in 2019. There are many of us who still question who the authors were, where the funding came from, and what are the political dynamics behind the conclusions that were drawn. So for many of us, even though it, it could be argued that this report has, has closed the vacuum, for many of us, it's argued, no, it hasn't closed the vacuum because we don't trust the people who have published the report. Yeah. I mean, what, what you described during that during that um, piece you just you just said, Jace, is, is kind of the whole ball game, not just in this country, in America, but pretty much around the world, uh, you know, for a long time in terms of how capitalist forces gain gain and retain power. And we've just seen it, you know, even more increasingly over the last 10 years or so. Um, and it, just in the last five, six years, um, you know, right wing demagogues, right wing, you know, extreme right wing politicians have come to power across the across the world. Obviously, Trump has now gone. Thank God. Uh, but we had Trump. We had Bolsonaro in Brazil. We had Modi in India. We, we you know, we've got. Um, We've obviously got Netanyahu in, in Israel. We've got um, Orban in Hungary um, and, uh, you know, and a number of others. And they're, poly, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're unleashing rampant capitalism, rampant sort of neoliberalism that's creating a world, a, a whole load of countries, a load of societies where the gap between rich and poor is, is widening at an ever increasing rate. A very very small number of winners in this competitive um you know capitalism is one big competition very small which ends up with a very tiny number of massive winners and a huge number of massive losers um and, and we're just seeing that all over the world now and do you then, think do you, like can I, I just say, before, tom, yeah. can I just say tom do you think though that the 
the debate around where coronavirus's origins are do you think that's just been saved up by politicians at the moment they've just they've just sort of pushed it out there every occasionally but do you think it, when it comes to a report let's say that looks at the way in which the the uk government handled coronavirus and maybe they'll do something similar in the united states etc do you think that that's when the push will come to say at the end of the day it was from china it's the chinese's fault and what you'll then do is you'll get possibly all those people that were maybe looked at that report and said mm, that's interesting you know in terms of the uk government's role in terms of some of the decisions it made and yeah. some of those people might think well you know oh I, I didn't realize that i didn't know that whereas yeah. instead you'll have pummeled that to be pummeled on the front pages of newspapers and from politicians etc on the right yeah. basically going on and on and on and on about china so it's the car got, it's the car they've got in their back pocket that they're waiting to play at the right time absolutely yeah and so what i was going to say jace is is moving on from what i said you know we have this system of capitalism with, with extreme right-wing leaders you know um with policies that are bad for the vast majority of people and push them further and further into poverty while favoring only a tiny tiny percentage of the population who are getting unbelievably rich there's also rampant corruption alongside that uh, and the destruction of public services which support people to lead lead happy and, and and decent lives and those public services programs as they call them america are, are being taken away due to austerity so eventually the vast majority of people will stop voting for that will stop voting for this system of capitalism will stop voting for these right-wing neoliberal leaders um, and we'll choose another option. Uh, and so in order to prevent that from happening, what clearly has been happening for 10 plus years, uh, and increasingly so, is these right wing politicians invent, uh, have, to create, have to create blame. They have to take the blame away from the capitalist system, which is utterly unjust um, and creates all these problems for people. And they have to get people to believe the blame lies elsewhere. And so the blame has been, you know, for example, placed on uh, benefit scroungers or benefit cheats, or uh, it's been placed on immigrants, or it's been placed on the European Union, or it's been uh, placed on uh, China, uh, you know, and the economic threats of China, um, et cetera. And so they, so politicians use the play this blame game where they get people to blame their economic and other problems on something uh in, instead of them realizing that the capitalist system is at fault uh, and to blame and and so that's the only way they can keep being elected into power and hopefully at some stage across the world people will will start to understand the damage that capitalism does uh ex this extreme version of late stage capitalism that we're seeing and people will reject it especially because it compl is completely failing to tackle climate change in any real and urgent way that is necessary so I hope that people across the world, led by young people, I expect, will at some point reject that system. In the meantime, in a lot of countries, we're falling into the politicians' trap of of of, uh, of blaming people, uh, people who are often also victims, also poor, uh, or blaming the the, the wrong thing. Uh, so yes, certainly, you know, blame, you know, saying China is, the, you know, the, the 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 origin of COVID and. and they did it deliberately, they created it in a lab and released it. Yes, they're probably keeping all that in their back pocket for election time when they can uh, rouse nationalist support by saying those things. Um, and the last thing I want to say on that is, is my, my general view of the origins of any virus is that it's not particularly healthy, useful or in any way to, to really um, determine what it is other than for scientific reasons to prevent it in future to to lay blame on any particular country because that's where a virus originated doesn't help anyone um yes understanding where it came from to prevent it in future is is obviously the scientific uh, a scientific objective and is important but laying blame on a country where something originated is it helps no one is crass and only leads to racism and the kind of increase in, in you know, 
racially motivated hate crime we've seen in America and, and now even in, in the UK. I just say this, the, the so-called Spanish virus apparently originated in the United States. There's detailed evidence of how that happened. But of course, somehow it got called the Spanish virus. Yes. Um, but that could, could, of course, be called the United States virus. And who knows where the next one will originate. And just something about the variants. It's fascinating to notice how we tend not to talk about the UK or Kent variant very much, uh, our politicians and our media. We tend to talk about the dangers of variants coming from Europe, um, the dangers of the, the Indian variant uh, most recently, etc without talking very much about the fact that the, the, the English or Kent variant is the most prominent one here and, and is by far the most prominent and deadly one across America. You know, tens of thousands of people have died in America having contracted the, 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 UK, the UK variant um, of it. Um, but that hardly gets talked about and you don't see British people being attacked in America, only Asian people. So. I mean, ultimately, as I'm saying, laying the blame on any countries for where COVID originates or where um, where variants originate is completely and utterly worth, you know, worthless. Only leads to hate crime uh, and, and racism and nationalism, which doesn't doesn't help humankind in any way whatsoever. We we need to stop doing it and just let the scientists explore how we prevent it better in future. Yeah, well said, Tom. I think that the, the thing to finish off with here is the, the irony is that um, with India and with other parts of the world where they found these supposed variants, they didn't shut the airports. And with Kent, they didn't shut the motorways or the A roads. So, <laughs> so that's down onto this government as well. So we're interested to see where that's covered in the report. But yeah, but thank you.